Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of valuing Nouveau Mon Graphite stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 227 million market cap. They're trading at 373 a share, and they have 61 million shares outstanding. We'll dig a lot deeper into the company, but at a high level view, they produce active anode material for lithium ion batteries in a fully integrated way. And they claim to be environmentally friendly, which is really hard to do when you mine a commodity. Their focus on graphite. In case you're not familiar with graphite, it's used in a lot of things, just to name a few, pencils, lubricants, polishes, and batteries. This company's focus is on lithium ion batteries. And it's mined in several countries. The big players are China, India, Brazil, North Korea, and Canada. We're looking at the ticker of the trades on the TSX Venture. The TSX, Toronto Stock Exchange, focuses on larger, more established companies. The companies that trade on the TSX Venture are early stage companies looking to access the capital markets to fund their growth. If this was an SAT question, I would say the TSX is to the NASDAQ as a TSX venture is to the pink sheets. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They are pre-revenue so they have negative free cash flow each year. Same thing with their net income, it's negative, since they haven't generated any revenue yet. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 466 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 347 million Canadian dollars. We divide that by 61 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 571. They're trading at 373, so they're trading at a 35% discount. It's a buy according to the model. So how do I value a company that's pre-revenue? Well, it's really the same way I value any company. I estimate the future revenue, and then I apply their free cash flow margin to the future revenue, and I discount those numbers back to today, and I get a value of the company. But how can you calculate the future revenue for a company that's pre-revenue? That's the trick, right? On the website, Simply Wall Street, it shows you the future revenue estimates. There are two analysts that project their 2025 revenue to be 180 million Canadian dollars. So that's what I use for my 2025 revenue. And then for the terminal value, I assume the 2.5% growth into the future. And the average company in their industry converts 11% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I applied an 11% conversion to get the free cash flow. Of course, nobody can predict the future with any company, but this is the best information we have. Since they sell a commodity, the future of the company is highly dependent on the price of graphite. So if that commodity goes up a ton in price, even if they were pre-revenue, their stock price would go up a lot. And if the price of graphite went down a ton, so would their stock price. There are 39 companies in the same industry as Novu, and if they have a number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. So this is the tick of the trades on the NASDAQ. So this chart is in US dollars. Since they're pre-revenue, they don't really have good numbers. They rank 21st in market cap. That's 166 million US dollars. And their market cap is equivalent to 227 million Canadian dollars. A senior miner, BHP, has a market cap of 150 billion. There are lots of junior miners, a lot more than senior miners. And a very small percentage of junior miners become senior miners. The one ratio we could look at is price to book, and that price to book is 2.5, which is equal to the average, worse than the median. Price to book is market cap over book value, or stock price over book value per share. Just to give you a little background on the types of mining companies, there are two types, the junior and senior. The junior miner is called the exploration company. It raises money from investors or other mining companies to conduct feasibility studies and try to identify how much of that commodity is at a particular location. Once they complete the exploration process and if they deduce the cost to extract the metal is less than the amount they can sell it for, then it usually sells the rights to the location to a senior miner. Or sometimes the junior miner retains the rights 
and does the mining themselves. It is much riskier investing in a junior miner because 99% of the time they go bankrupt before identifying anything. The flip side is when they are successful, the stock blows up and you can 10, 20 or 30 X your money. The best way to find a quality junior miner is to try to learn about the company's projects by understanding the grade of the commodity, how many tons of it are available and where it's located. The location of the metal needs to be in a safe area with little political interference. You need to be able to get to the location ideally by driving and your workers need access to water, power, etc. Let's talk about the senior mining company. A senior miner has lots of experience, is well capitalized, and is actively mining different commodities and selling them. To value a senior miner, you need to look at the projects it has and the amount of potential metal it can pull from those projects and gauge the future price of those commodities. When you invest in a commodity-linked company like a miner, the company is at the mercy of the market price of that commodity. You can do all the analysis in the world, but if you're invested in a copper mining company and the price of copper drops 70%, the stock will tank. Let's take a look at that latest presentation. Novu Mon Graphite, green battery materials to power the clean energy transition. Projected to be North America's largest vertically integrated production of natural graphite to provide battery EV manufacturers with carbon neutral active anode material. There are lots of countries trying to phase out ICE, internal combustion engines. Europe plans to be 100% EV by 2025. China 80%, UK 100% by 2030, Japan and Canada 2035, and the US should be 50% by 2030. EV sales expected to reach 21 million units by 2025. That's a 29% 10-year Kager. Energy storage is a 41% 10-year Kager. Kager is compound annual growth rate. And this company plans to be North America's largest integrated natural graphite producer. Here's a picture of their mine in Manawini, Quebec. This is a high purity flake graphite mine. And this location can produce 103 kilotons per annum. And the lifespan of the mine is 25 years, and they plan to expand this location. Here is a picture of the battery material plant in Becancourt, Quebec. And this has a capacity of 46 kilotons per annum of active anode material and specialty products. And it needs to be fairly close to Manawini. It's 150 kilometers because there's going to be a lot of transportation back and forth between locations. It has a modular design to allow for scalable expansion. Their Uetnan mine has a 500 kiloton per annum of flake concentrate. And they're projecting this to be the largest graphite production mine in the world. The IRR internal rate of return is 26%. And with an 8% discount rate, that's an NPV of 2.2 billion Canadian dollars. So they finished phase one de-risking. That took five years. They need to do permitting. They need to do feasibility studies. Lots of work before they can actually work on the mines and pull the commodity. They're in the middle of phase two. That should take up to 2025. And then company growth from 2026 and beyond. They claim to be a green and safe mining companies, zero environmental incidents, all electric powered fleet. Women make up 29% of the company and their sustainability rating with Moody's is an A2. Graphite mines exist all over the world, but most of it is in China. 65% of flake, but 100% of spherical graphite. Less than 1% in India, about 1% in Canada. 7% in Brazil, 22% in Africa. The US has declared graphite a critical mineral. And this company strategically located for the US and European markets. It's very easy to get products from Canada to US. It's challenging to get products from China to the US. About half the lithium ion battery is graphite. And each manufacturer has a different mix to make their batteries. Some use lithium, some use nickel, manganese, cobalt, but all of them have to use some graphite. In 2022, the demand for graphite was 2000 kilotons. That should almost triple by 2025 to 5,800 kilotons. Then almost 11,000 by 2030, 11,700 by 2035. And the demand for graphite should be more than lithium, which is 8,100, nickel, 4,900, 
and Cobalt 968, almost as much as all three combined. Mataweeny is just flake graphite. Beckencore has spherical purified and coated spherical purified graphite. Here are some numbers. The NPV for Mataweeny is 986 million. They use a low discount rate, 8%. I would probably use like 12 to 13%. So it should be around 600 million. Beckencore 1.4 billion, so total 2.4 billion. That's pre-tax. After tax is 1.6 billion. 25% IR. After tax IR 21%. So pretty short payback period, only four years. And they project sales to be 596 million, which is equivalent to 436 million US dollars. So the numbers look great. They just have to execute and hit these targets. And this is for phase two. Phase three has a pre-tax NPV of 3.6 billion, after tax of 2.2 billion. And the payback period is less, only three years. Shares outstanding of 61 million. Fully diluted is 87 million. Management and insiders own about one third of the company. One half after dilution. They're gonna need to keep raising capital because they need 500 million Canadian dollars to fund Mataweeny and over 900 million to fund Beckencore. So that's 1.4 billion of CapEx. There's gonna be lots of dilution over the next year or two until they could finally start turning a profit. Here's a breakdown of the CapEx and Mataweeny. 17 million is the cost of mining per year. 26 million is ore processing. That's about 75% of their CapEx, so those two categories. For Beckencore, the biggest CapEx spend is purification, 47 million a year. That's 35% of their CapEx in that location. Let's take a look at the ticker on Simply Wall Street. Its last price was 373 per share. 227 million Canadian dollar market cap, up 20% in the past week. That's huge, but down 43% in the past year. Let's learn a little more about the company. Nouveau Mon Graphite engages in the acquisition, exploration, development, and evaluation of mineral properties in Canada. It mainly explores graphite. The company holds interest in the Mataweeny Mine Project and the battery material plant project situated in Montreal, Quebec. They also engage in the real estate and trading business. They were formerly known as Nouveau Mond Mining Enterprises Inc. and changed its name to Nouveau Mond Graphite Inc. in February 2017. They were founded in 2011 and headquartered in St. Michel de Saints, Canada. Here are some of the risks simply Wall Street lists. Less than one year of cash runway, that's a little concerning. Earnings have declined 39% per year over the last five years. That's kind of the life of a junior miner. It's a long haul and a lot of money drainage until they become profitable. Revenue less than 1 million, it's actually zero. Shareholders have been diluted in the past year. Here's the stock price since 2013. There was a ton of activity in 2021, the beginning of 2021. It was over $22 a share at one point. That would have sucked if you bought it up there. It is trading higher than what it was pre-COVID levels. It was around $2 at the end of 2020. Under $2 in March 2020. That's the peak of COVID. But the company is getting pretty close to generating revenue. It might actually be by next year. Simply Wall Street is on another planet. Their price is 165. They say the stock is 98% undervalued. There are no analysts pricing this stock, so we can't get price targets there. The revenue target for 2024 is $9 million. That number comes from four analysts. And two analysts have their revenue at $180 million for 2025. They were debt free in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. They added a little debt in 2019. It looks like they paid down some of that debt. Then they added a bit more debt at the end of 2022, also in 2023. When a company's pre-revenue, you don't really want to see debt because they don't have any money to pay back the debt, meaning they don't have any profits. The only way they can pay back the debt is by issuing equity which dilutes the shareholders. This blue line is their equity. They did have negative equity in 2021. Looks like they raised some capital. By the end of 2021, they had over 100 million of equity. Currently, there are 81 million of equity, 53 million of debt. That paints a pretty scary picture. When you layer in their cash, the picture doesn't look that much better. 
their cash and their debt are pretty similar. The shareholders are definitely not making any money, but the CEO is $460,000 a year. Total compensation, $1.5 million. He's been CEO for over 10 years. Not much insider activity. There's been one buy last month for 2,600 shares. 61% of the companies owned by the general public, 19% by private companies, 9.5% by VC and private equity firms, 9% by institutions and 2% by insiders. Their biggest shareholder is Pallinghurst. They invest in metal companies. Their focus is investing in companies that make the materials for batteries. And the ticker trades in three places, the TSX Venture, New York Stock Exchange, and Deutsche Börse. So that's the end of the video. Let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.